Hi, my name is uh, Advocate Priyanka Vilas Pandey. I'm a practicing advocate based out of uh, Mumbai, Maharashtra in India. Um, a little background about myself. I'm a law graduate. I graduated law in uh, 2011, after which I was working for a New York-based law firm. Um, and uh, thereafter, I was working with Thomson Reuters with their Governance, Risk and Compliance Division uh, before moving on to my uh, private practice in uh, litigation uh, in the Indian subcontinent. Um, in India, as far as my litigation experience is concerned, I've handled various matters across various disciplines, such as criminal, civil, family disputes, IP law, etc. Uh, academically, I've also pursued my uh, master's in human rights, and I'm a data privacy specialist. Uh, I have an international postgraduate diploma in international cybercrime, uh, and I'm also a privacy lead assessor. I am also trained in uh, mediations. I've been into independent practice since 2015, and uh, around 2018, uh, I decided to go uh, more digital and use less paper to try and support the environment as best as I could, uh, which was when I started to work a lot with PDFs and which was when I invested for the first time in a mag. And uh, thereafter, COVID happened to all of us. And uh, not by choice, we all were required to become more friendly with technology and use uh, the internet and, and our devices uh, even to conduct work which was otherwise offline. Uh, it was around this time that I was exploring uh, what other applications, devices and softwares I could use to make my work more productive and more efficient, uh, which was when I came across Liquid Text uh, uh, and uh, how I could use Liquid Text to have digital briefs and, and not carry around a lot of paperwork because litigation can be very bulky. Uh, and so I've been using Liquid Text for uh, a little over six months or now, I would say. Uh, and it's been transformational uh, because it's very easy to use. Uh, it's very user-friendly. It's very intuitive. Uh, and uh, most of the features that uh, I would want uh, to be able to link my documents, to be able to cross-reference, to be able to create my own various workspaces, uh, depending on the stage of my matters, to be able to uh, upload and change uh, my briefs to add or delete uh, or PDFs or pleadings uh, as the trial goes. So all of these features are already there. Um, and uh, as you use it more, I think you become more intuitive uh, with Liquid Text. And so it sort of evolves with you, I guess, with the updates that they're working on. And um, so it's, it's been a great help to have Liquid Text as uh, something that I can use to manage all of my briefs online and uh, walk into confidently in a court just with my iPad and be ready to conduct a trial at literally the click of a button. The features within Liquid Text, how would you typically use those for legal tasks? So if I'm looking at uh, using Liquid Text for a matter which is kept at the stage of permission, which is uh, sort of the first hearing of the complaint, where we're required to satisfy the court of why our petition is uh, supposed to be entertained or required to be taken, you know, moved forward to the next stage. Uh, at a stage of admission, I'm as a litigator, I'm looking at not just my document, but also any other pleadings which may have been filed by, let's say, the state or uh, any private party who's on the other side. So I will also need access to their documents. And in my workspace, I can create a sort of flow of my arguments because I can uh, think about my narrative, how I want to approach the argument, make my pointers, uh, use uh, the link to specific parts of the pleadings or documents which I would want to reference or read out to. Uh, at the same time, I can also uh, create bookmarks or highlights and have extracts of particular points, which could be topic-wise or category-wise uh, or, or even timeline-wise. Uh, uh, so depending on how the flow of the conversation between me and the judge would go, if there are any queries that I am asked by the bench, uh, which require me to jump uh, either to a timeline or require me to jump to a specific part of somebody else's pleading and not my pleading. 
uh, or to jump to a case law, which I want to uh, refer to, uh, I can have all of that categorized on on my on the notebook on the workspace area, which will then help me navigate quickly even between workbooks to sort of address those points. So um, that that I think is most helpful. Also, the feature that helps you to highlight certain parts of the document that you want to read or reference as you go on a particular page is uh, very helpful. When you need to find information during court proceedings quickly and efficiently, it would be really interesting to understand the types of searches that you prefer and perhaps also how you use things like tags and ink links to classify evidence so that it's retrievable in the most efficient way. Tags is another good feature which I actually uh, forgot to mention. So tags helps me to uh, sort of identify what at what stage or uh, with what reference to what point in the pleading I would like to use a certain document, right? So I can create tags across various categories uh, the way I would want to handle and deal with my brief. Uh, the highlight view is also uh, very interesting. Like you said, it gives us an overview of everything that I've highlighted in a particular document or in a particular workbook uh, at, at one glance. So it sort of helps me uh, get a ready retina view of uh, everything that I'd want to uh, look at or everything or to ensure that I'm everything that I want to reference in a document is already highlighted and flagged there. So uh, that's another thing. Uh, the ink links that you mentioned, yeah, those those are uh, particularly great because that helps me get to a specific. So I give to give you an example. I was recently working on. Uh, I am still working on a matter, which involves a crime uh, where there is a threat of a, a certain level of cruelty on a victim who uh, was pushed to sort of even commit suicide, uh, and that is part of her complaint. Whereas the party who's opposing that complaint has made a statement in their pleading saying that there was never any threat of suicide and there is no such argument in the complaint. So this contradiction I have mapped with that ink link on the main complaint, which we call the FIR. And I have mapped it to the statement made by the other side where they say that there was no suicide. So if when in my discussion we come to the point of suicide and how it ties into the crime which is alleged against them this ink link will help me sort of look at both together and point to the judge the contradictions there i believe you often make submissions to the high court and that involves yes. a petition and affidavits and yes. so you'll have an enormous amount of evidence some of which might comprise admissions uh, there might be documents that need to be tendered. Uh, there'll be key parts of expert opinion, um, prior inconsistent statements, uh, and things to remember for cross-examination. Can I just ask you how you classify all those different types of material? Is it with tags? Is it with color coding? What are the sort of ways that you organize all of that? I use color coding more than I use tags. Uh, what I do find helpful is to sort of organize uh, the documents or the pleadings in a certain flow that I would expect. So there, there'll be one set of documents, which would be my documents that I want to rely on. And then be, there'll be another set of documents which have been filed by the other side. Uh, and I can also do this stage-wise. So I can put, for example, I can put just the petition and the reply to the petition together. And then I can put our affidavit of evidence as well as their affidavit of evidence together which will then help me uh, draw out and pan out uh, whatever the contradictions or inconsistencies are, and then frame my final arguments based on the issues which are before the court for determination. This is uh, one set of document that I so I've scanned. This is a very bulky brief that I'm required to read. So this is set A, and we're just sort of going through all of these documents. And I've just started to make some uh, notes and links uh, date-wise on uh, my workspace to sort of go across the sets. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, one of the case studies that I'm using in the text right now. This has helped me put extracts. So everything that's not my pleadings is marked in a different color uh, with the extracts. 
and everything that's related to a particular point which I want to refer to is used with that ink link and then the reference tags and that's my workspace area. So, and, and these are the case laws uh, that they sort of seek to rely on so I can highlight them and go them as I speak. Priyanka, can you tell me a little about how you organize all those materials in folders on the left-hand side of the screen when you first import the materials into liquid text? When I added all the documents, so this is the main campaign. This is uh, the petition that was filed before the High Court. This was the reply that I filed on behalf of my client. And um, these are some additional uh, pleadings that, you know, notices that were served on us. Uh, and other applications that I wanted to rely on. And this is the sort of dateline that I've created separately, which I then imported into my liquid text project to sort of give me like a ready reference of what's, what's happening in the matter. Uh, so I imported all of these first uh, and I put them in order of uh, my preference. Um, and then I started to work on uh, creating links and extracts for them. Uh, when do you tend to I digital notes with handwriting when i'm thinking uh, or or i have questions or i'm reading the matter for the first time uh, i i use my pencil a lot to sort of underline mark questions that i want to ask the clients or get more clarity on so that i can refer to it later um and also when i sort of want to create strategy around how i want to go to the matter or i want to make a list of okay, what's, uh, you know, what are the pros, what are the cons, uh, what's working for me, what's not working for me, that sort of uh, analysis, uh, that's when I use my uh, pencil a lot. When you grab excerpts from a PDF, how do you break yeah. that up and organize that information between different workspaces? Many times, the same matter can spiral into different uh issues that you have to deal with. So for example, there was a criminal complaint which was filed at the instance of uh, my client, so the victim. And uh, there was one application that was put before a court seeking uh, pre-arrest or anticipatory bail, uh, which required a different set of research, different uh, documents, different pleadings to address. Uh, and after that was done, the same parties approached the higher court to sort of quash that complaint, which requires a different approach, but it arises out of the same complaint. So for that matter, I divided my workbooks to sort of make sure that one was uh, with reference to everything that I had done when there was the bail matter, which was ongoing. And then the other one is for the quashing that is ongoing. So it helps me keep my notes separate, although for the same file, but for different stages of the matter. So that's how I divide. Do you tend to have some uh, templates that you use? What I do presently is because uh, I've kept all of the uh, acts uh, that I would want to use in, in a folder, which I call ebooks. So every time I want to rely on a particular part of uh, any spe specific part of the act or whatever, I will then import that particular piece of legislation into my uh, workbook and then have that extract mapped out so that in case the law point comes up, I'll, I'll be able to refer to that. Same theory applies for any case laws or precedents that I may want to rely on. Can I ask you, do you have advocate friends who are also using liquid text? <laughs> no, I think, uh, so I am, uh, of course, uh, preaching liquid text to all my friends, uh, but uh, I do have uh, friends who are already using liquid text. Uh, I tell them that you could not be carrying that bunch of papers and be carrying just an iPad and have all your client files with you at the same time if you were to go digital. Because <laughs> that is a big challenge uh, for practicing advocates who are, for me, because I don't restrict myself to just one court. I move from court to court because I'm a counsel for litigation. So I argue various types of matters before different courts. Uh, so it's sometimes I have more than uh, a couple of matters which are different before different forums all in the same day. So then I find myself running between courts, uh, even if that's within the city. Uh, so to do that with a bundle of papers or briefs can be very difficult. But if I have scans of all of that, and my workbook's ready in my liquid text, then it's just a matter of me carrying my iPad and going wherever I need to be.
so it's very handy it's more flexible i think it's also more effective it's also uh, more productive because uh, i don't need to wait to get to my office to access a brief because my brief is already scanned and with me so i can use my time more productively or to switch between matters uh, when i need to how often do you use liquid text i think i use it every day because uh, all my matters now slowly i'm i'm making my office also paperless so i'm now in the process of telling my clients that i'm going to basically scan your entire brief and put it there so if you put up with those costs but i'm also uh, working on making separate workbooks for each of my cases uh, so that i can manage them uh, online through liquid text was there a specific aha moment when you realized what it could do for an advocate Oh yeah, when when so when my friend Bernardo showed me that I can link documents, uh, which are like so when I can use that in link to sort of even switch between the documents that I'm linking. That was like a wow moment for me. That, that was fantastic. I was like, okay, this helps me not go through pages, and so the kind of transition that I can see between uh, how we use paper briefs. And how that can be seamlessly done, even on, on the iPad, that really is 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 fantastic, because uh, uh, it 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 takes away the burden that there are limitations in what you're using, to manage your brief, or that you would not be able to scroll between pages. So uh, once you know how to use it, you you can be completely dependent only on this and not worry about not having paper. Do you think, Priyanka, that using liquid text actually can make you a better advocate? It could. It could. Because uh, there are so many things that you can uh, look at and think through differently when you've got technology sort of highlighting and marking things for you, right? Many things that you may miss on paper, but when you're when I'm reading through my documents and I'm looking at a particular part, and I just want to highlight it and keep it aside till I don't get rid of that. It's not going to go anywhere now. It's in my workbook. But uh, when when you're doing this on paper, if I've missed taking a particular note, then uh, it could be lost in reading. And somebody points it out or something happens around it. Uh, very difficult to do that in liquid text for the simple reason that when you're making your notes or you're making your highlights, you're as it is reading everything. So... It, it just makes the referencing easier, the highlighting easier. And uh, I think you're just uh, more confident knowing that you've gone through everything and you've put everything in place because you've worked on your project and your materials right there. In India now, we're uh, sort of pushing the entire phase of going paperless ourselves. Very recently, uh, our Supreme Court has now gone uh, entirely digital. So we now have phase-wise implementation of uh, going digital in trial as well. Um, while the pace is quite slow, I think this is a great learning curve for uh, litigators such as myself to sort of understand how these products work and, you know, use them uh, more consistently so that we depend less on paper and more on technology to do our work.